about you might just be lying to us, maybe. Sometimes you gotta close the door to open a window. Since Kagrobachi began, we have had a, f a handful of things thrown at us about the law in the world. Number one, there was some sort of imperial war. And number two, the Sacred Blades were created by Shihiro's dad using a material known as the Daten Sekai, which ended said imperial war. But as the series continues further and further and further, Hokuzoro keeps giving us a tiny, tiny glimpse at something much, much larger and much, much deeper within the world. And recently in the latest chapters, the biggest example of this was the Sazanami Storehouse Sorcery, a type of sorcery that passed down through generations and allows the user to activate and access an ultimate dimension of sorts in order to store weapons, people, things and stuff basically the people want is kind of the most concerning anyway yeah but it goes deeper still because it turns out that once every generation once every now and then a talent is born that allows him to wield both the storehouse technique and also the ESO which is an attack technique based sorcery for their family and the result is pretty damn impressive it took hakuri here from zero to hero within a couple of chapters and not only did hakuri become someone who is capable of beating his brother he now has the potential to combat his father through the means his father didn't even think was fucking possible which is quite enticing it's quite ent entertaining to be honest with you but all of this got me thinking because clearly there is depths and levels to the sorcery being shown within the series and every now and then hokazono just comes along gives us a little breadcrumb on it but i believe the sacred blades are the key to showing off this said insane power it's also kind of connected to the imperial war so we're gonna go down a kagurabachi rabbit hole also make sure to like and subscribe first ever kagurabachi theory video on the channel so if you haven't already make sure to like and subscribe but you see throughout the series she here has been wrestling with the idea that the sacred blades choose their wielder for example during his fight with sojo it wasn't only just a clash of ideals it was also a clash of truths for both shihiro and sojo because shihiro on one hand believes that the blades are made to fell evil essentially while sojo believes they answer to his connect his convictions to gain slaughter which is some crazy psych psycho shit to say out loud still a cool character please don't be dead rage anyway but both of them they're true both of those statements they're true we know this because of how strong sojo got and how strong shihiro got both of their blades answered their calls they chose themselves and a couple of chapters ago a blade that was once answering to sojo now also answered to shihiro to help give him strength but that's that's where i think the lie is right there you see i think zono is giving us the old fake around rope a dope wombo combo here i think all of the blades can be used by any member of the rokuhira family well specifically Shihiro, because i know obviously there's contracts there's live contracts on the blades that state that they can't be wielded by anyone else as long as their main wielder is still alive Shihiro outright telling cloud gouger your rokuhiro property you gotta answer to me that got me thinking about the possibility that sojo was killed off to lure us into a false sense of security to try and back up that statement that the Kamenabe think about here. And my two working theories here is that Enten is sort of like the master key, the master blade, if you will. Something that Shihiro's dad poured his literal soul into. Because as we see when Shihiro's dad died, he was clutching the sword Enten. And then we're showing the three fishies here, which represent each power for Enten. And obviously, Shihiro's dad had his own knowledge about this. But also interesting detail, I noticed how there's three fishies for Enten. And it was also three sorcerers that killed his dad. Kind of interesting. Well, I believe the soul of Rokuhira resides within Enten and it will allow Shihiro to wield all of the swords regardless of whether the owner is alive or not. Now, this is either due to his Rokuhira lineage, lineage here or ownership of the Enten, which whichever one it may be, we're not sure yet, but I feel like Hokuzo is definitely working towards something here because obviously something, I believe personally, something further resides within these blades here. And it's only a matter of time before Hokuzo reveals that because as i mentioned before this series reminds us reminds me specifically a fair amount of hunter hunter and not only bleach also but there's a couple of other series tied into here but the fact that they are talking about realms beyond and how uh, the swords answer people's convictions it's very interesting but this all brings me roundabout into my next point here which is the imperial war and how the imperial war wasn't fought against humans it was actually fought against monsters or spirits you see spirit energy is something that is used within the series we do they see it all the time to use sorcery and we've seen in the series the average sorcerer they just aren't not they're just not up to par with an enchanted blade i mean outside of shiba i mean shiba might just be the fucking gojo of the universe right now this dude is actually insane but him aside everything that we've seen so far is far from a sword wielder and with shihiro he had little experience with enten so 
it's mentioned quite a few times how he doesn't even know the full extent of its power. I mean, and he is still only a baby wielder right here, and he still just absolutely fucks up everyone in the verse. No one has come close to even competing with him properly yet. The only person that we have right now that has competed with him was Sojo. But this is the only image that we have of the Imperial War. It's this image right here. And this particular image, we see massive attacks, the likes of which Shihiro or even Sojo haven't even come fucking remotely close to. And it's also mentioned by Azumi how in the war, they had all the blades on their side. All the swords were fighting for them, essentially. But they've never seen two swords clash before. And on the flip side of this, we now have Hiyuki, a woman who is considered the Kamanabi's strongest fighter. And she doesn't wield an enchanted sword. No, no, she wields something called Flamebow and the Starving, a fiery entity who lends here the power to rival these sacred blades, apparently, according to Shiba. And this is an entity who she actively speaks to. She calls it Rikuo and asks for a hand. And then later on in their fight against Shihiro, asks for some ribs. And she's also got permission to use Flamebone up from the torso up, which is quite interesting here. And I believe Flamebone was possibly one of these entities that fought in the Imperial War. And to add further credibility to this here about the being extra mythical monsters going on here, Piku on Twitter pointed this out, that inside Kiora's storehouse here, this stands a skeleton that is clearly not fucking human. Now, after I saw this, I went and looked through for more traces of non-human behavior and more shit, and I found this one panel of the Imperial War, which I mentioned before, and we see a massive fucking hand protruding from the floor and what seems to be a tail of something else in the background. There also looks to be like the same shockwaves of Iso in this fight, which makes me wonder if the Sazanami family were also fighting in this Imperial War because those are also a, a whole clan of fighters, which interesting. So who knows? But the more you look at this picture, the more you see, which is quite interesting. So my theory stands as is. There are more things in this universe that are not human, and Hokazono is getting ready to drop some of them on us. And I believe eventually we will end up seeing Shihiro wielding not only Enten, but also the Shinuchi, or maybe another Sacred Blade. Because I was fully expecting him to be, like, rocking up here to this Sazanami uh, auction with the fucking Cloud Gouger and Enten, but obviously that's not what's happened. Obviously, some hijinks has happened here, and he's, you know, he's found himself with just only the one blade, but... Anyway, that's it from me. First ever theory video for Kagurabachi on the channel. If you liked it, please be sure to like and subscribe as it does help me out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, I will catch you guys all in the next one. Much fucking love. Big fucking kisses. Peace.